Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, and always, our times are in His hands. Our days are cramped full of commitments and responsibilities, even more so in 2019 when I recorded this. We are caught up in a whirlwind of activities running from one thing to the next. There are not enough hours in the day, not enough days in the week, and not enough months in the year to do everything we feel obliged to do. Work responsibilities, family obligations, cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, caring for elderly parents, and squeezing in a few minutes of exercise each day leaves little time for emotional, spiritual, and physical rejuvenation. Fatigue is our constant companion, or it is to many people. We toss and turn at night, worrying about the things on our to-do list the next day. Guilt and a vague sense of failure weigh heavily on our shoulders. We feel that we are letting down friends, family, and employers. Self-condemnation overwhelms us as we struggle to keep a daily devotional time with the Lord. We can't remember the last time that we were able to just enjoy and be present in the moment. Our minds are constantly racing to the next task on our list. Is this the abundant life Jesus was talking about? No. We feel isolated. Although family, friends, and co-workers surround us, we find it hard to maintain heart-to-heart -heart connections. And those type of connections take time. Yet we can barely afford the time to nod to those we love as we scurry past on our way to our next appointment. We are poked and prodded by our demonic tormentors. I should be doing more and I'll never get it done. Is this what the Bible talks about? Who the Son sets free is free indeed? No. God is not pleased when his children are exhausted and frustrated. He created us to live in freedom. He created us to rest, and he did not create us to be chained to our daily planners, cell phones, and emails. As I am not an efficiency expert, I will not offer advice on how to manage your life and declutter your schedule. However, I can direct you to the one who proclaims this truth. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And that's Matthew 11, 28 to. You notice this isn't an invitation, 30. This is a direct command. Come to me. The same way when a parent calls their child to come to them. Christ is calling you. Come to me. We need to talk. And let's pray. Lord, we place our days before you. Hour by hour, minute by minute. We give our plans, our responsibilities, and our commitments to you. We feel bogged down and we can't find a way out. There are too many things we believe we should be doing and we have too many dreams we are trying to achieve. Help us to prioritize our days. We place at your feet everything that appears to be a good thing to do. And everything that society says is a good thing to do if we are to succeed in life. We know that you are a practical God and that you give us practical solutions. So Lord, Lead us to those solutions. Guide us to godly friends who have found freedom in this area so that we can learn from them. We say our times are in your hands and we say our identity will never be fulfilled by doing things for you. Our identity can only be found in who we know we are in you and through 
our times of devotion with you.